Hi, this is Ryan with Publicity, coming to you from our offices at Contra Studios. Today we are in conversation with a man who needs no introduction, but he's going to get one, Mr. Brian McKnight. Welcome, Brian. Thank you. Now, originally, like I said, you're from Buffalo. Right. Um, and we, I was actually personally looking through your Twitter account, and mm -hmm. I was really amazed to come across of, I think it was a tweet that said, and I'm paraphrasing, sloppy, but the Cowboys pulled it out. On Sunday's game. On Sunday's game, right against the Giants. Right. Uh, which, which is great. It was a very interesting game, obviously, being in the New York area. Right. So many people were tied to that. But so what I did is I, I you know, emailed and texted some friends at the Cowboys. Um, and Charlotte Anderson and Shy Anderson, who were, you know, Jerry's daughter and son-in-law, right. got back to me. And they're dying to know, uh, you know, how long have you been a diehard Cowboys fan? And how did it happen? It happened when I was eight years old. I played Little League, I was a running back, I wore number 33 because my favorite player was Tony Dorsett. I knew you were going there. And when he left from Pitt, he went to Dallas and I instantly became a Dallas Cowboys fan in a house full of Steelers fans. So it was, it was very tough considering that wow. the next year after we won in 77, we right. played against them and uh, Pittsburgh won. So when I met Terry Bradshaw, he signed a football for me that I have in my, in my media room that says, to Brian, sorry about Dallas, Terry Bradshaw. <laughs> really? so, yeah. Now, have you met TD? Have you met Tony Dorsett? I've met him. He's, he's, he's fantastic. Fantastic man. I yeah. mean, he's a type of guy who you would never even knew he played pro football, other than never. the fact that he's you know a, a, a you know strong guy. Right. You know, he's got no attitude, no aura about him. He's really down to earth. You know, most of those guys, especially from that era, between TD and I played golf with Eric Dickerson, mm -hmm. and um, you know OJ was actually my favorite running back. Mm -hmm. And in '72, I was still a Bulls fan. Sure. I'm Bulls. I'm a Bills fan. <laughs> well, we know you were a Bulls fan yeah. for a while too. A Bills fan, but uh, you know, I, I love athletes. I think that being an athlete, being a professional athlete, is the greatest job on earth mm -hmm. because whatever you put in chances are you're going to get back, and not every career is that way. Absolutely, that's true. Um, going through running backs, I mean, you know, you, you said Eric Dickerson, you know, O.J. Simpson, Tony Dorsett. Who's your favorite out of that entire period? Is it T.D.? No, actually, uh, O.J. is my favorite runner. Okay. Um, as far as just running the ball. Mm -hmm. I think all around have to be Emmett. Really? Yeah. Is that due to the Cowboys tie? Or is no, that... I think, well, he's the all-time leading rusher. Absolutely. Um, coming out of the backfield mm -hmm. and blocking and doing everything that a running back is supposed to do in the modern era of football, I think he's probably the prototype for, for that. And tough as nails. I mean, playing through that separated shoulder back when in oh, the yeah. NFC Championship yeah. And not the fastest didn't... guy. No. Not the most elusive guy. Barry no. Sanders was awesome, but right. I, I'd still probably take him. Yeah, and Barry Sanders is the, the EA favorite. He yeah. was voted on recently by the cover. So, you know, I'm a Barry fan just because he, he took a team that was, what, 3-13 right. and 13 for years and made him yeah. a playoff contender. Absolutely. Contender but for I think we'll see, depending upon if he can stay healthy with, uh, with Peterson. Mm-hmm. He may end up being the best there ever was. I'm wondering if people are going to start tearing their ACLs on purpose and having them redone <laughs> oh, like surgically. Tommy John? Right. Like exactly. Tommy John. Like the Tommy yeah. John surgery. Yeah. Everyone comes back from that better. It's like, just slice it in the beginning of the yeah. career and heal it up. I think some guys have done that. Right. Now, you've performed uh, at multiple uh, arenas and stadiums performing the national anthem. Right. And obviously, you've performed in front of tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. But is there a different pressure singing the song, the national anthem, uh, in front of a live crowd than there is about performing your own music? Uh, There's so much criticism when people do it differently. I'm just curious. There is. I take a different approach. Mm -hmm. I realize that when I sing at a sporting event that nobody's there to hear the anthem. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to do service to the song, to Francis Scott Key, the writer, mm -hmm. and sing it pretty much the way he wrote it. Good. And I realize that it's not about me. I think you can get so much more for doing less with that song right. than you can with, you know, I remember seeing something on South Park or somewhere where a guy did the anthem was longer than the sporting event, <laughs> and they, you know, because we've seen that. Sure. So, plus it's so patriotic. I'm not a patriotic guy until I feel the words of that song while I'm singing it. Sure. There was one, I sang at the World Series when the Giants were playing the Angels, okay. game six. So this was 84-ish? No, this was 90, this was... Oh, this recently, is recent. oh six, oh okay. seven, more recently yeah, than yeah, way yeah. back. Okay, and uh, they were telling me, you know, the the planes are going to fly over right at the rockets' red glare. Mm -hmm. So we want you to keep singing. I'm like, no, I got this, man. I'm a professional. I got this. Don't worry about me. So I get there to and the <laughs> and you can hear everybody. Oh my God, this guy's going to come up with father. Exactly. You know, it, was, it was one of those awesome moments sure. where just like you you don't see these stealth fighters anywhere. <laughs> no. And there they come, and you don't hear them until they fly by, and you see it. Until like, right when they're on top of you. And right when they're, yeah. Boom. boom. Yeah. And I'm like, 
And you're so <laughs> the bombs <laughs> bursting in here. Yeah. So every, if you kept your mouth open like that, maybe everyone thought it was just an audio issue, and that you were really hitting the hitting I, the note. I, I don't support. know what happened, but I it was it was it was something. I thought I had it, but I didn't. You can't prepare for that moment. At, how can you possibly? <laughs> you can't. How can, it's like you know, like shooting free throws. How can you possibly right. shoot, you know prepare for twenty thousand people you know yelling right. at you in the middle of a you know with one point down and one second left on the clock? You can't. I think you can. But you think so? For no. three, yeah, I say that because free throws are free. True. And you're sitting there. If you, if you, we Don't tell Shaq that. Well, no. I think Shaq made him when he needed to. At least he'll tell you that. He'll tell you that he, <laughs> he made him. He will tell you that. Dwight Howard, on the other hand, that's a whole <laughs> different story. Right, Orlando centers. You know, I think you can, you can practice the free throws to get that down. Well, it's always 15 feet away. Right. Always. Yeah, it's always 15 feet and 10 feet high. Exactly. And the rim's always the same size. Except and, and I remember a Reggie Miller story where he was talking. He was in the an opponent's arena. And he was at shoot around and he was missing. And he said to them, the rim's off. And don't you know when they measured it, it was like an inch and a half. Get out. Off. Yeah. So that tells you that these guys know what they're oh, doing. Really? That's shoot. crazy. I yeah. haven't heard that. That's really interesting. We know you're a huge NBA, yeah. NBA fan and you're friends with Ron Harper and you're right. a Bulls fan back in the right. day. Now, you, uh, I think you're like a little bit more like me. We follow players right. more so than, than teams because... Except football. No, no, I'm talking NBA. Yeah, NBA. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, because, the, you know, the players change so much. You're really rooting for a uniform, right. you know, more th than a team. So who are the players that you're following today? Uh, I have so many friends that play in the league. I've known LeBron since he was 17. Tony Parker and I have gotten real close over the last few years. I know all these guys. I've played pro-ams in the summer, but most of them, James Harden, mm -hmm. as recent as three years ago. It would a um, great year with Houston. Yeah, I, I want to see the game played at a high level. It doesn't really matter to me most of the time who wins, mm -hmm. um, but what we see in this sport, like in most sports, I think that the game has changed and evolved into something. You know, you got 6'10 guys that only want to shoot threes. Right. You got centers that, you know, play away from the basket. Nobody gets in the post. It's a very up and down kind of game. Nobody plays defense anymore. The good teams do. Mm -hmm. Well, that's um, what takes good teams to the championship. Yeah, yeah, you know, and defense wins championships because no one else plays defense. <laughs> yeah, true. And we see that's probably why Miami's been winning the last two, so right. we'll see what happens. But it, it's a different game that you kind of have to adapt when you're our age, because I, I think that the 80s and the 90s was, was the greatest time for just about everything. Sure. Well, Brian, thank you so much for your thank time. You. We appreciate you being with us in conversation. You got it.